This morning, so excited, we've got the spin beads. Really loved working with them. What I want to demonstrate for you is something where they don't spin. Um, these two cuffs, they're both made in the same technique. One's got beads on it, seed beads on it, uh, one hasn't. What I really love about this design is the fluidity of it. I just love the way that feels. It's going to drape. It sits beautifully on the wrist. It will mould itself to your, to, to, to your wrist shape. Absolutely lovely. It's also because of the design, you can see through it. So you get, um, it picks up the colour. So you can, you can um, use that with the bead choice you use to enhance someone's skin. So if you've got a beautiful tan, you could use a certain color. If you're a paler skin, you can also use that. If you've put it on top of a jumper, etc. So absolutely great design. These are the two kits um, that I've used it with. Um, this is the v uh, VWXC37, and this is LXXC24. So those are the two kits we've done. The only other things you're going to need are some needles. I've used size 10 needles, uh, some cutters and a bead mat and some thread. So it doesn't really matter. You, you're going through 11 O's. I would use an eight pound or below um, just for, for ease. Again, I've kind of used the thread as part of the design in this one. You don't really see the thread in the one with the, the Mayuki seed beads on. Right, let's get started. Let's move these out of the way. So I'm going to predominantly show you how to make this one. However, I'll talk you through making the other because all it is is adding seed beads on to the to the thread as you're going through. It's exactly the same pro process. So we're going to move all this out of the way and we're going to start off with a seed bead. Now, the one other thing I need to tell you with this one is the beads are actually, the white beads have got a coating on the front of them. So on the back of them, they're plain white. And on the front, they've got um, this coating to give that extra iridescence to them. So you do have to think a bit more carefully about where you're placing the bead, which way you're doing it, because so you get one side or another, and that makes this one reversible. If the beads, the other one, the beads are the same each side, so it makes no difference. So that's just something else to be aware of. So we're going to pop those out of the way. Right, so we're going to start off and I'm going to show you how to do the five sort of. But then we're going to change it. So we, we, we're lining them up and what I've done is I've checkerboarded it. So you're going every other each way, like a checkerboard. We're going to start off in one corner. And I'm going to tie a knot. There we go. Leaving plenty of tail. So this is going to be the corner one. And I'll show you the difference because I've used both threads, both a dark and a light on this. You can use the thread very much as part of the design. You can use a clear one. Um, or if you really don't want to see it, then put the seed beads through it. The seed bead one will take longer for obvious reasons because you've got to thread all the seed beads on. So I've just done two double hitches to start that off and then I'm going to fetch it round so that it's coming off one edge and my tail out of the way then I'm going to pick up a seed bead now I want to do a figure of eight I'm going to go in the next spinner bead slide it down now when I say a figure of eight depending on which way you do it that would be coming straight from one side or another but if you turn it the other way, then it forms a figure of eight. So if I pop my thread back through there, you can see I've gone all the way round. Let me just pull that through. So I've gone all the way round that one, and I'm forming this figure of eight round the first one. Now, because I've tied a knot in the first one, it's not quite so obvious. So I'm going to go back through there. You don't go through all of them twice. Pull that in tight. Now, the reason I didn't just tie the two together is because because of this gap they wouldn't sit comfortably so the seed bead is acting a bit like um, a buffer so I'm coming back up through that seed bead down through the middle of my spinner these spinners are great they sit so well together they tessellate beautifully um, they'll stack lovely as you'll see on some of the other pieces 
So now I've come out of the middle, I'm going to go in a line with this. So I'm going to pick up another one. So I'm coming from the bottom of that one, I want to go in the top. Now, if we're using these beads, the top and the bottom makes a difference. If I'm using the the um, the two chalk based ones, then it doesn't matter. But you can see quite clearly where I'm saying top and the bottom. There, it's coming both over the top. If I flip that bead over, then we're getting our figure of eight. So with the with the white beads, just remember you can't flip them. So you need to be aware of which side. If you're coming out of the top of one, you're going through the bottom of the other. So I'm going to go back into my number eight. Let me just pop through there. Back into my number, uh, sorry, number 11. There we go. And pull it. So now you can see the, the figure of eight for me. Now, if I go over the top side of that, obviously the figure of eight isn't complete. So I need to take that underneath and come up through the bottom. And then we pull that and that forms our figure of eight. And now we're starting to get our shape. So we go back through it and up and we do this until we've got a line of five keep pulling them tight so if I move this over you'll now see what I've, I've done a line of five but this time with the white thread so you'll see it less with the white thread so you've got this line they've got the little bead in so on on the on this the, the five cuff the bead blends a lot more into the design whereas with this it's a real contrast point so we're going to turn the corner now and come back down the row so this time for the edge one pick up one of your beads pop on your spinner slide it down make sure you've got your figure of eight and back through your number 11 and we want to go underneath so I, I tend to hold it all together, come back up through. Now I have made a slight difference here, but you can play with these designs. Right, so let me pull this one up. And you can see I've missed the checkerboard. I should have had one of those to go there. But you could have rows. You can play with this design however you like. You can put diamonds in it, whatever. So we'll carry on with this. And at the moment that'll twist but it's about to be anchored now. Make sure you go back up through that center. You should always be joining from center to center. Pick up your next spinner. So now we've got two to join. We've got to join the one it's immediately coming out of. Go back through your 11. Pull it to the end and at the moment with these it doesn't matter which way round you go. Pull it up, get it in the right place, feed back through your number 11, come on, you will be doing it in a different angle, I'm trying to do it so that I don't get in the way of the camera, which is operated by the amazing husband John, again, thank you very much. We're going to now turn the corner. So instead of going straight back down the line, I'm actually going to tie it into the next one. So we're still doing our figure of eight. So we've come out of the top of there. We're going up through there. So you'll see this now starts getting some form. As you've seen, the design itself is very fluid. Form your figure of eight. Um, there we go. So you can see that's now tied those four together. OK, and you carry on doing that. So we're going to go all the way down and I'm going to pick it back up and we've got three rows. OK, so I'm going to pop that one to one side. So you just keep going up and down. Now at this point here, sorry, very long tail. So at this point here, you could actually do either of those bracelets because we can either go three wide like that or we can carry on doing five like that so you know you could do two wide doesn't matter i've actually done a necklace where it's just got one wide 
going around the neck. It will work whichever way you do it. You can make them as wide or as narrow as you want. So you keep going like this for the required length. Now, what you have to remember is your clasp. If you're doing this design, because you've got the seed beads and it's only three wide, then I've actually attached it to a three uh, hole clasp and I've just extended the seed beads for that and I'll, I'll, I will um, go through how you do the seed bead one in a sec. Okay, so there is actually not much space needed, probably only a couple of centimetres to add the clasp to the design. So just be aware um, you've got to leave, when you've done this bit, you're adding on the clasp, whereas this one, because it's five wide, you either need a five separator, but I wanted to show you how you could just use your normal findings um, by narrowing this. If, if we'd have attached it to the middle one, these corners would have just flopped all over the place. It, it, wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have held its shape. By doing this, by narrowing it, then we've actually created a, a way of actually narrowing it at the end without the seed beads. And all you're doing for that is when you're getting to the end of your, your piece, on the corners I have gone round several times. So you can see this is quite thick here because I've actually gone through and repeated that figure of eight two or three times and the same this side just to give that a little bit more rigid, rigidity. Then we're going to cut across so we're not adding one on there we're going to come across and through and then we're going to add the next row on and we're putting the three middle ones into that row so we're going to add one on here and you can see where this black really stands out in the design whereas with the white it doesn't so it's, it's personal preference if you've got any of the colored threads um, or if you're using a, a Nymo or a, a, a Ceylon, um, then, then you know, by all means, use that as part of the feature. Use it as a contrast um, because it, it, it actually adds quite a lot to it. So on all of these three going across, I have gone through a couple of times. So I've gone all the way through. Normally I would then come along to the next one, but I'm actually going to come back through that 11 and it will take several passes. Go back through around that one and it just helps firm the edges. So if you go around it one extra time, it will amazingly firm up that quite a lot. So if you do that on each of the ones at the end and then all you're doing when you get to this part is I've added the seed bead and then I've gone around the... Um, jump ring back through the seed bead as if this jump ring was one of the spinner beads and that's all I've done to connect that always do it on a jump ring and then you can choose what clasp you use if you attach the clasp directly um, and someone can't cope with that clasp or they want a magnetic clasp you've got to go back to where you last had a thread so it, it means undoing it if you've got that jump ring then you can just swap them over no trouble Whereas with this one, it's obviously part of the design. So when I've been doing, so that's how to do that one. Like I say, you can have any width you want. You could do it all the same color and it will still look beautiful. Um, so when I've been doing this one with the seed beads, I've used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beads and gone around. Okay, this forms a loop which you want to go all the way through. Then you're going to come back through three of those beads and then the fourth, that fourth bead is where your one bead is in the other. Now if you want, use a contrast colour bead. Um, but to be fair, you've only got the few. So then just push that down, see how it's sitting around there quite nicely. You get that nice curve round. So then you'd pick up another three beads. Pick up your next. So we're still following this figure of eight motion. Just the same way as we were. So we need to come up through there. We're then going to go pick up three. So we've got one, two, three. I should have had four there. Let me just come out. 
because that will then sit funny. So you've oh no, that's right. You've got you've come through four that side and you've got three that side, so you've got your seven. Just looked a bit funny. So then we're going to come back up this way, add on the other three from the other side, and we're going back through that fourth one of the previous hole. And you're getting this figure of eight link across the two. And literally, each wherever you've got a thread bridge on the way we've done, you're wrapping th around it. So when you get back to the start, to make these sit properly, I've used the last bead on each side. So if we're going to turn the corner now, come on, come on, there we go. That last bead on each side becomes the first one of the other side. So now we only add on three to, to form our loop. So just remember you've got five because you've got two already there. So that bead counts for both as does the one in the middle so you have two between and the three static ones and then you just build that up in the same way as you've done this and there you go